you all, uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm Stuart from VCHA, and uh, today we're going to be looking at artist relaxation. And I'm actually going to be showing you different methods, techniques, applications that we can use to produce some artwork. Um, a question that I'm often asked actually is, um, Stuart, I can't draw. Stuart, I can't paint. And my answer to them is, look, we're all creative and you, you, we've all got the ability to draw and I'm going to demonstrate that soon and I'm going to show you how that can be done. So, art as relaxation, what does that actually mean? There's two things here, we've got art and relaxation. Firstly, it's important that we can take time to relax and that could be at any time. But today is about using art as a tool to actually achieve relaxation. So in order to get to relaxation, there's certain factors that we can, we can use. And I'm gonna show you. So the first one is that we need to have freedom. So our freedom is about us creating our own constraints, our own borders and boundaries. And we can achieve that in art. For example, this piece of paper is my boundary. So we can set that, and this could be any size. It could be A4, plain piece of paper, and often a size that's used is A3, which is a very usable size. So we've got freedom, and then we need to focus. So through focusing on something, we're starting to open our mind and we start to concentrate. So we're kind of part way to relaxation. Next, we need to find inspiration. Now, inspiration comes from all sorts of things. It could be a visual reference. It could be an object. It could be maybe a magazine or a book that you've just looked at or read. Um, it could also be colours shapes, your senses, could be something you've eaten, but these things bring inspiration. So if we can find that inspiration, we can then start to move on to the next step, which is expression. And with art, it's really about expression. We're heading towards producing a piece of artwork. So what do I mean by that expression? Well, it's making your choices, it's about movement. So you're expressing yourself in a physical way. You're connecting your mind to your body. So it's, it's a way of you releasing your thoughts, feelings, and inspirations. And relaxation. So we reach relaxation at the point that we are being creative. And that's really what that is. So through art, relaxation is the point at which you're being creative. Um, and what's important here is that, as I said, a lot of people say to me, Stuart, look, I, I can't draw, um, I can't paint, I'm not an artist. And my answer is, we're all creative. We all have the ability to draw. So there is an artist in all of us. And I'm gonna just demonstrate that. Now, sometimes you can apply your focus with your eyes closed. Now, me personally, I've closed my eyes and I'm gonna be putting my pen, pencil, piece of charcoal, whatever material we choose onto the paper just move it. Technically I've just created a drawing. That's mine. It's individual. So whatever you do and whatever you produce is your drawing. So as you can see I produced something from making a simple mark on a piece of paper. Um, and I think what I'm going to do now I'm going to just show you a variety of materials, methods, techniques and applications 
that you can maybe try for yourself. And what's important when you're using art materials is that you try them out, you test them, um, you discover what they do, discover their properties. Um, and the only way to do that with art materials is by actually using them, trying them out. And it's about building up that confidence to make that move. So part of that movement is your expression. So what I'd like you to do as well also, if you have any questions for me, I'd just like you to, to fire them my way please and um, I'll do my utmost to answer them for you. Um, so anything that's basically art related or is it based around relaxation? Um, this is your opportunity to do that. So, what I suggested earlier in terms of size, I find that pen, pencil and paper is probably the thing that we're all familiar with. So, pencil and paper. An A3 size pad is probably, it's a manageable size. Um, I like working on A3, it's okay. Now, if you feel more confident, you can start moving up to maybe A2. So it goes beyond that, and it's about you adapting to your surroundings. For example, I, I, don't, I live in a particularly big flat, so I'm restricted in terms of the scale and things that I can do. But what I've also found is that an ideal medium to work with is a roll of wallpaper lining. Um, it's fairly inexpensive, it's quite accessible. You get that in a roll, and you can either cut it into sections, staple it up and create your sketch pad. I mean, in general, art materials can be quite expensive, but I would always recommend that you experiment first. You can shop around and really you can find some good deals out there. Um, you don't need to be spending a fortune on art materials if you're just starting off. So that's my recommendation to you. Um, again, size is dependent on what you feel comfortable with. We're all familiar with plain A4 paper. Now, this is also something that you can turn to being creative with. And an activity that I like doing is transforming that two-dimensional piece of paper into three dimensions. And we can do that in several ways. This means that you can focus on this plain piece of paper. And by just folding, I've transformed it, and as you can see, it's gone from two dimensions to three dimensions. We can actually make this more complex. We start to make some tears. And again, we can start to transform it. So you've created a three-dimensional piece of art from a fairly standard two-dimensional piece of paper. So, and I refer to that as paper sculpting. Um, it's important to remember as well that with your materials that you find something that you're comfortable working with. Um, paper tearing and paper sculpting, just you can transform it and it comes from all realms of, of mediums and materials. Um, I've found also that tissue paper is a great medium to work in. Now there's lots of things that we can do with tissue paper. Um, I'm going to just show you an example. Um, and some of the basic materials that I think you will need for your art cupboard or your art box is probably some PPA glue, a pair of scissors, maybe just some colouring pencils, some good old prick stick, some pens. I like to use marker pens. Pencils. These are the basic, basic materials that you can actually create so, uh, such a variety of artwork from by using different methods and techniques. 
Can so, I, can I ask a question? You sure. can. Fire away, please, Mark. Morning, everybody. It's Mark here. Just passing on a question from Alice, and she's asking you, Stuart, what is your favourite medium to work with? My straight answer to that, Alice, and good morning, Alice, um, is I like to mix my media. Uh, medium. I don't have a favourite, and I think for me, I was brought up around drawing, so my discipline really would be pen and pencil. I love to draw, but I also love to mix my medium. So that could be creating a collage and working in an abstract form. So I hope that's answered your question. If I was going to be using paints, I most certainly, my favourite would be acrylic paints. Um, and the reason for that is that acrylic paints are so versatile, they're pretty easy to use. They don't mix as well as other paints, however, they're very, very versatile and quite inexpensive in some cases. Thank you, Alice. I hope that's answered your question. So I'm going to just show you something that we can do with tissue paper. So using the glue, you can use paper for this and I, I think in terms of quality of paper, if you're using something too thin, um, it means that obviously if you're starting applying water or water-based materials or mediums, you're probably going to find it's going to start weeping up. Um, so I'm also very resourceful when it comes to art. And for example, a piece of card. Um, I have been known to use big packaging boxes. So you can be very resourceful. Um, back of an envelope. So, for example, let's just say this is an envelope. Because I love to draw, I will use my pen. On the back of that envelope, I'll start to produce, say, a mini Zentangle, which is in effect a doodle. Again, a scrap of paper, and I can actually start to build that up. So by turning over the back of an envelope and just creating a doodle, there's two things here. You're creating a piece of art, and you're having a moment of focus. And it's the point of focus that you've been, you're moving on to being creative that you are experiencing relaxation. It's about you, it's your space that you've created. Doodling. I started off, and even, even as a kid, I, I, I draw on anything. Um, envelopes, scraps of paper. Um, so be resourceful as well when you're creating your art. Um, use what's available to you. I think that's so important. Providing you have Something to scribe with, i.e. a pencil and paper, that's all you need to start. So, tissue paper, again, you may have heard of the collage, I'm sure most of you have. So, again, your creativity may come from, say, a magazine, something. So, it's about looking through, say, a magazine or something that you might find some inspiration so the fact that you don't have to be able to draw or paint means that okay you've found an image I'm, I'm enjoying the outside and some nature so I'm just gonna take that Stuart can I just say Absolutely. I'm, I'm not sure how easy it is for that color to be picked up okay <coughs> so you might it might be better with a darker colour if you could go over Yeah, that. okay, I can do that. This was my initial drawing, as hopefully you remember from the start. Um, but just by placing your pen, pencil, or select chosen media onto a piece of paper, technically you've created a drawing, and that is your drawing. I'm not sure if anyone's going to go away and replicate that. Um, and another thing when you're creating your art is that 
you know, it is non-judgmental. And I think the only, you are your own critic. Um, and as an artist, yes, in, in the past I've found that it's, no, I'm not quite happy with that. So rather than try to change it, move on and try the same process again. You can't, if, if you, you, you're there and you start correcting it and correcting it, in fact, you're probably going to lose that moment of relaxation. So put it to one side, start again. It's like if, for example, if you, you baked a cake, you burnt it, you're not going to put that right. You're going to have to do that all over again. So by focusing on a collage is a moment of relaxation. You're being creative. And I use tissue paper a lot because I, it's colour based, um, it's very pliable, it's really easy to work with. And all you really need is probably a little dab of water to go with your glue. And you can start to build up your picture. And again, you just keep building this up. So collage is a good way to actually express yourself uh, by using colours, shapes, textures and images. Images that inspire you. So that's one, one way, one method, is create, create your own collage. Okay? And most importantly really, when you're creating your artwork, it's having fun. So have fun doing it when you're being creative. Um, you know, and be good to yourself when you are. And like I said, you are your own critic. If you're not happy with it, put it to one side, try again. But experiment. It's so, so important with art and art materials that you experiment and discover what they do. And so I've got a few examples here in terms of materials. Now, another basic material, and I've probably all, all heard of them, um, we've got wax crowns and chalk. So a wax crown, I remember these, good old wax crowns, and good old chalk. Again, they're great, great mediums to work with. But if you're not sure what they do, it's important that you actually discover what they do. So, again, a scrap of paper or something, use them. And just just apply them see what they do turn them on their end turn them on their side see what they're capable of doing that's crown chalk they're soft so chalks yeah they're a bit messy i agree uh, but you can see they do something completely different to wax crowns so wax crowns you've got that texture with chalk, it's soft, so it also smudges. But they are a bit messy, I agree. If you turn them on their edge, you can get sharp lines. But again, experiment with them. You can mix chalk as well. So if I've got another colour here, I might want to just mix that in there. It's not to create different shades, different colours. There's a comment here from Alice Stewart. Hello, Alice. Alice says sometimes making accidents when she's doing art gives great and unexpected results. And I would agree with that, Alice, because um, a lot of art out there is preconceived. And I think artists, artists either work work to a regime, what they stick to, that's what they do, that's what they want to do, but you're right. You know, we can refer to them as happy accidents. Um, I think that's important. So it's a good point because it kind of labels the fact of experimenting and discovering the properties of materials. What do they do? I didn't know it did that, but hey, you know what? Actually, that's not so bad. So thank you for that, Alice. And again, you just you just play with these. So this is just using chalk and crowns. Um, 
you can add colour. And I think also something with art which is important is that I was brought up on a drawing, so a lot of my work was really black and white. It was drawn, so it was carbon based, it was black ink pens up with drafting. But then I had I had a problem probably when I was quite young, very young, that an art teacher said to me, um, I said, I just can't put this colour down. I, I, I actually don't feel confident in dipping my, brushing that paint and applying it. I said, do you have a fear of colour? And I said, well, I don't really know. And from that point, I did these little activities and exercises, just using colour, just applying colour like I am now. Um, and do you know what? Kind of my life changed in a way because I, having discovered colour to see what it does, um, it gave so much inspiration. Then I realised everything around us is has a colour and it's colour based. So it's good to experiment. And an art teacher also said to me, Stuart, you need to get out of your sketchbook. Great drawing, brilliant. Get out of that sketchbook. So it's exactly what I did. And I just started moving up scale. I mean, now, obviously, scale is something that, that uh, if it's available to me, then I'm gonna use it. Um, we don't all have that um, uh, facility of a wall where we can go and do some graffiti, um, but it's good to change scale. But I would always recommend that working with A3 is manageable because, you know, if, if you haven't got the space at home, you can kind of put this on your lap as well. So it's important, if you have got the space to lay something out on the floor or put it on the wall, then absolutely go for it. And that's important, just go for it. Um, so experiment, feel confident with what you produce because everything you produce is about you. Um, so it's, it's worthy of you. And that's so important that, as I said, you're your own critic. Um, and it'd be good if anyone's got any questions on different types of materials, that's fine, but I'm going to actually talk a little bit about paint as well and colour mixing. But before I do that, I'd like to talk to you about the areas of art. Now, we use the term art, but what do we actually mean by art? Well, there's actually three forms of art, um, three recognisable forms. So we have visual, and I'd be interested if anyone has any comments that they actually know what the visual arts are. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll give you a couple of examples. So visual arts will be paintings, things that are visual. Paintings, photography, hope you can all see that, and sculpture. So these are probably the three most well-known aspects of visual arts, and it comes in all forms. Now you may find that your interest in art, or your moment of relaxation, may be visiting an art gallery. Um, and I know from my own experience that visiting an art gallery is really relaxing. You've got the atmosphere, you've got, you've got the quietness, enjoying your element. You find something that you love to look at visually, and you do, and you just explore it. And we all will have our preferences when it comes to art, so you have your choices. Um, so sculpture, so visual, visual arts, paintings, photography, sculpture. The next one is applied. So applied arts, well, Applied arts, gem applied arts generally relate to something that has a function. So it could be interior design, furniture design, all aspects of design really and functionality. So interior design, fashion, jewellery, and so on. Things that have a function, product design, industrial design, the things we use every day, kettles, teapots, these have all been designed. They all have a function and a purpose. So that's applied. Um, and again, our built environment, which is something I have a great interest in, is architecture. So they are applied. So they start off as a concept drawing or design, like most things. 
and they transpose them to something that has a function. So visual applied, and the final one is performing. So performing, it kind of does what it says on the tin really. Um, it's about live, and so if we think of live, we may think of dance, drama, actors, they're all performing arts, acting, singing, so music is a performing art, singing, dancing, making music, playing music, they're all performing arts. And with this as well, we've got something else that I'm going to talk about in a moment is words. Because words used in poetry, literature, in the literal sense, words is performing art. Standing up, doing um, a, a comic sketch on a stage, that's also a performing art, being a comic, or mime. Um, anything that relates to motion, action, movement. So these all come from either the body, but they come from the mind to the body, either to the pen or the body through dance. So, just to recap on that, visual, what we can see, applied, which has function, but we can also see, and performing, which is something you don't have to paint or draw, be able to paint or draw to do this, but you're still a performing artist, you're still an art in itself. So I hope that's just helped to look at so many different areas of the arts. It's so important that you recognise that. So, I spoke about words. Well, so Stuart. I've just picked the letters from my name. I've used words. Now you're probably all familiar with tales and graffiti and how words are used to actually define things. Posters, you don't, the product design, graphic design, um, is an element of applied art. So by doing this, maybe just write your name, write a favourite word or something, but then look at that, start to create your own piece of art. Something as simple as your name, really. Can I ask a question, Stuart? You can. This is a question from Erwin Edgehill. Hello, Erwin. Thank you for joining us. And he'd like to know, how long did it take for you to get to where you are now in terms of your art abilities? Um, it's taken me a long time. And I think if I, if I said my age, it's really a lifetime because um, I remember the first day that I was handed a piece of paper. I was actually very fortunate because um, we're going to come from quite a, quite a, you know, quite a background really, work class background. And but my name used to work in a paper factory, and back in the East End of London, at these big paper mills, she was able to bring home scraps of paper. So I had that in front of me, and I just used to sit there drawing. So, you know, it was like nothing was really academic in the early days. Um, but when I was about 18, I realised that actually I want to be an artist, but I was kind of dissuaded a little bit from that because when I was 18, there was no real idea of how you could make a career from art and being an artist. So I then adapted it to a more applied form of art, which is architecture and design. So I learned how to be a draftsman and I learned how to draw. So from about 18, I think, I realised that actually I'd like being on a drawing board, being really technical. Um, in between that, kind of during that time really, was even the element of a fear of colour. So I didn't, wasn't that confident in producing free art like I do now. So probably over the last five, six years maybe, it's been a progression. Um, that even now I'm still experimenting with materials and I think that's so important. You, you continue the learning with art. 
the more you do, like everything really, the more you practice, the more improved that your skills become. So it, I think it's ongoing. And I think building confidence and developing different methods of art is a learning curve and a learning process. Always learning something new about art. Um, and also looking at other precedent studies and inspirations from other artists because they inspire me as well. So looking at photography, I'm, I've just got an interest in so many different things. Um, and in the end, you kind of not sure where your inspiration comes from. Um, probably nothing worse than someone saying, well, Stuart, there's the pad. Can you draw me a car? Um, and I think that's art to order is what a lot of artists do. They're commercial artists. That's what they do. Um, that's not where I'm from. I'm more of a visionary artist. So ongoing learning, early age drawing, but I didn't know what it was doing until I was about 18. And I could turn it into a career. So I hope that's answered your question earlier. A lifetime. Um, and I think the most important thing is that you enjoy it. And being creative is, you can see what I'm doing today. I'm getting a bit messy, but you know, it's not well wool white shirt, but I could soon cover that as well. Um, it's something else you can do because um, I've just got t-shirts and shirts and I could just, just use the acrylic paint on them. So fabric design, you can use fabric paints. Um, I can't demonstrate this at the moment, but tie-dye, something may, you may remember from school. You know, just putting string around bits of a t-shirt or shirt, dipping it into a bucket of dye, taking the string off, and there you've got this lovely swirly pattern. Um, so again, it's another medium, fabric, I draw on fabric, um, backs of cartons, anything. Um, it's so important to, to be resourceful if you feel, for example, you you like the sound of oil paints. Now, the reason I recommended um, acrylics earlier was because they are versatile, fairly inexpensive. They, you can kind of wash them out. Um, they're great paints to use. And I think they, because they're, they are water soluble, um, but acrylic based. So when they dry, and they dry quite quickly, they're kind of like a plastic coating really. You've probably heard of, people that have acrylic nails, I mean, same thing. They use acrylic car paints now. Um, so it's very versatile. Um, and also with acrylic paint, I, my mixing medium is PVO blue. I use that for so many different things because it's a good binding agent. So it works well. Um, you can mix it with anything. and. A lot of artists out there and a lot of art critics will actually give you these sets of golden rules about art. You can only use certain things with certain things. Well, this is where it's important to experiment. There are no hard and fast rules. However, if you want to produce oil painting, you know, you've got to use oil paints and there are certain techniques and methods that you need to know in order to use them successfully. But acrylic paints, pastels, these sort of things, you can experiment. And there is no right nor wrong. If it works, great. If it doesn't, try something else. Um, I've used coffee, tea, spices, anything that leaves a delible mark or um, leaves a dye. And most things in nature have a dye. Um, a lot of paints were taken from nature. So if you actually like chlorophyll out and leaves the colors, if you actually use them and leave them in water, they'll stain a piece of paper, flowers, anything from nature really. So you can, you've got a massive art supply out there and the great outdoors and at home, in the cupboard, your coffee, your tea, your, your spices and something like turmeric, it's a nightmare. I think I've got that, said that right, turmeric. Um, I used some the other day and I'm still getting the orange off my fingers. So. These were used back, back in the day, really, um, when they were using all sorts of different dyes. Egg yolks, so to create this, this effect. Um, so there's so many things you can use. Try things. There, there are no hard and fast rules, really. Um, if you're going to, say, for example, you've got 
Now, oil, oil pastels, I don't actually have the, I've um, got some oil paint here. So, oil paint, obviously everything looks kind of similar in the tube anyway. Um, oil paints, the thing with oil paints, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful medium to work in, but it takes so long to dry. You've got to be very, very patient to, to get into oil painting. Um, it's very time consuming, but that's what that's about. So the time that you're relaxing with oil painting, it's a great discipline. And that's the word that I put in there is discipline. You've got to be patient, tolerant. I'm not really in terms of my art. I want it to be there, be done, dry quick, um, love oil painting, but I haven't really got the patience with sometimes. I like to create something quickly. Um, so that's why I use chalks or pastels, wax crowns, oil pastels. They're really your fundamental materials. Now, you can start to mix. Can I make another comment? You can. Alice is saying that she loves putting filler in paint to make it textured. Brilliant, brilliant. That's like, um, it's like a gesso. So um, the chalk finished pastel, I'm going to have to come back to you on that one, Alice, but there's a, there's a real term for that. That was used back in um, pretty much medieval times and beyond because they mix like lime. So they mix it in, create a plaster and put the colour in it. Um, absolutely, it gives you texture. Um, great medium to work with. And that's a good example of, just try it. Um, wallpaper paste, see now you've said that, now I'm thinking of things. So if you want to think of something changes, something's function, appearance or application, try it, you know, that's a good one. Absolutely a good one. She's also saying that she's tried recently using leaves and pine cones to paint with, so found objects. Yeah. So that that's thank you for that, Alice. Because um, again, taking something from nature, you haven't had to go to an art supply to get your pine cones. So I'm thinking of how you interpret that. So are you using them? Um, are they open pine cones where you're dipping them in the paint and making a mark? Um, there's ways that ways and means that you can actually apply that. So that's really interesting. And certainly leaves and colour. Um, probably we've all used flowers and made little pressings in books. And you open them up and there you've got a little stain of the colour because natural dyes and colours are out there. We're surrounded by them. And original paint was made from pigment. And a lot of top paint manufacturers, it's all about getting the correct pigment and mixing it correctly. Um, and that's where it comes from, pigment. Uh, you know, a lot of things like acrylics and a lot of materials now are, are, are manufactured. Um, but as I said, top manufacturers, and probably someone like Brownies, um, probably still produce through pigments. Um, and also, I don't know, most of us might have a half a tin of emulsion sitting in the cupboard or under the sink somewhere. Um, don't let that go to waste. I mean, again, use that, use a bit of emulsion, find a pack of big carbon, recycled material, anything. Just paint with the emulsion. You know, and if you can't get out for whatever reason, then you know, if you're on a budget, well, you don't need to buy the paint. If you've got a little bit of something knocking about, just use it, um, mix it up. You know, if you want to make it a little bit tan, put a little bit of coffee in there or squeeze a couple of tea bags in there um, and just create that image. So, but it is important that you, you really, really experiment and discover. Um, and these points about, you know, I'm not going to stand here and tell you, look, this is, this, today is about painting, we're just going to be talking about oil paints. It's not, it's about art. And to generalize with art, I think you've got to be prepared to experiment and try. And that's an important thing that I want to get across today. Um, you know, we are all art, we are all creative. So you don't need to be an artist to be creative. And it's so important to remember that. Um, 
if you want to approach the discipline, then that's a learning curve, which is really, really good. You know, you might find something that I said, we really want to do some still life drawing. I want to learn about proportions, scale, perspective. These things are out there, so those opportunities are also out there. You might want to explore watercolours. Um, I haven't spoke about watercolours a great deal, but they are another paint that is very versatile. Very, very straightforward to use watercolour. Um, and all you, all, you really, all you need is your water, a brush, and I'll talk about brushes in a moment. Um, that's it. Now, the only difference with watercolour is that some, most people's preference will be watercolour paper. And the reason for that is that, as I explained earlier, there's nothing to say that you can't put water onto a plain piece of paper. It's just gonna, but you're just gonna say, well, actually, that's okay, but that's what it does. So you've gotta be prepared that that's actually weakened that piece of paper slightly. It will dry. So there's nothing to say you can't use watercolour on non-watercolour paper. But if you actually use watercolour paper, it's designed with texture, so it absorbs water differently. You can kind of more or less soak it and let it dry out and stretch it. You know, but you can't with a plain piece of paper if you try to stretch it, that happens. Um, so there's certain reasons for using certain things. Um, and like you probably have heard of cartridge paper. Now, cartridge paper is, is paper that is generally related and associates with drawing. Um, so, you'll be familiar with that term cartridge paper. Now, cartridge paper comes in various weights. And you may have noticed this where you've got the GSM or, or G, G4 stroke meter squared. So that will give you the weight of the paper. You know, 130 is okay. Um, 130 is probably a good size and good quality cartridge paper. If you want to go up upper level, then 180. You can go up to about 220, 240, but then it becomes starts to become like card. So that's a good way. You know, and some sketchbooks come with pretty much box down with paper, but this is just a pile of plain copying paper and it's essentially perfect to draw on. That's I said, backs of envelopes, bits of card. You may also find that colour paper, again, these are things that are quite inexpensive. You know, to, to create your collage, so by tearing, cutting, folding, you can actually create an image. And this kind of relates back to this three-dimensional, from, from a, uh, a two-dimensional piece of paper. Um, you know, creating a paper sculpture. Um, you know, you can focus on this in itself because, you know, looking at this, it casts light, shadows. You may want to photograph it afterwards. So you're using another form of art on top of your visual art. So your photography, combine them. And I think it's so important as well. So experiment. Flower. So, has any of us tried flower and water? Now, flower and water just creates like a bit of a paste. So, if you have some plaster or flour, a bit of water, mix that up, a little bit of tissue paper in it, play with that, mix it up, and you're creating a paper clay. It's that straightforward. And I've actually made a lot out of paper clay. So, flour, water, some just box standard tissue paper. Make a pulp, dries off. If you actually want to put some PVA in it, that's good because that will bind it and it'll obviously set a bit harder. So try that. Create little sculptures from just flour, water, a bit of glue, and some tissue paper. Um, I actually had more fun making the stuff, to be honest with you. <laughs> quite a messy process. Um, I think it ended up making quite a big bucket, and um, I took it to a lesson, and um, everyone actually create these little mini sculptures, but you can really go to town with these things um, and it's really quite solid. So again, that's another method. So obviously continue to show you some more methods and applications. Um, as I said, I said about the collage, I actually love doing these. Um, you know, your inspiration, 
may come from the magazine, a book or something. Now, something else I'm going to talk about is pressing. So, I remember when I, I actually didn't go to, I, I went to a formal art school, which was my architecture, so it's Cambridge School of Art and Architecture. Prior to that, I had no real formal training. I just learned by experimenting and doing, basically. Um, but I also found, now a lot of art teachers and critics was, don't trace, you know. Um, but this is about formality and discipline again. It's well, if you're gonna to learn to draw a bowl of fruit, then you need to learn to draw a bowl of fruit and, and look at scale, proportion, all those disciplines. Tracing is actually drawing. So whilst you're tracing an image, you might think, well, look, I really wanted to draw, you know, I really want to draw that lamp. Well, go for it. And I think the important thing is that give it a try. Get your piece of paper and pencil and try to draw and look at it. But if you're not getting there with it, trace it. Because whilst you're tracing, you're drawing. And that's the important thing. And that's what this is about. Your focus on tracing an object. And when you trace as well, you're understanding its form, its scale, and its proportion. So tracing is a good way of actually drawing and learning to draw. So by all means, trace. It's so important. Um, and it, as I say, it's okay. And, and I'll endorse it. And I'll say, look, you know, don't try too hard in drawing something. You know, because that's another discipline in itself, how you break an object down into different forms and dots. Stuart, I like it, trace it. Sorry to interrupt. A couple of questions. Yep. Um, Alice is asking, will it work with normal paper if you don't have tissue paper when you are mixing with flour? Okay, so the reason I say tissue paper, it will, but the important thing is, if you've got a piece of paper that's very thick, how long does it take to absorb the water? Well, okay, soak it, and absolutely you can use that. It's just, the only reason I say tissue paper is because the tissue paper doesn't become the overall binding agent. So it depends on the ingredients and how much you put in proportions. Absolutely, you can use any paper. A good thing to use is old newspapers. Um, obviously, you know, if you're mixing this up out there, just be mindful of the fact that you might want to put a pair of gloves or something on, um, a pair of kitchen gloves or something. Um, that's interesting because you've got the dye coming out. I'm not, don't think there's so much dye in newspapers anymore now, because they're a lot safer to use. You can get that print everywhere. Um, but yes, Alice, um, it just takes a bit longer to absorb water. It's absorbency. That's the only reason I suggest tissue paper. Also, she'd like to know, have you been inspired by a particular artist? Many, many artists. I, I'll tell you a couple. Wassily Kandinsky from the Bauhaus movement. So a lot of art from the Bauhaus movement. Wassily Kandinsky, he was a pioneer in abstract art. Um, I've never really been a bond lover of impressionism and impressionists. Because I'm a little bit more visionary, I would only pick Van Gogh from that era. Um, Salvador Dali, so surrealist art. Um, definitely abstract art and modernist art. So a lot of respect for the pop art period and pop art artists. Modern contemporary art, no, I don't draw any inspiration from it because that's about being creative and and, and creating something new. That is where I'm more involved, is conceptual art. So, conceptual art is quite visionary. So, it's about producing something that hasn't been done before, which is practically impossible out there. Um, so yeah, I've been inspired by the Bauhaus movement, or Silly Kandinsky, and Goya and the Old Masters. You know, like I said, there's a broad spectrum and I pick everything i couldn't pinpoint it to one at the moment it's kandinsky i love his abstract work and i've been doing a lot of research on him of late his use of color and why he did what he did and 
Um, an interesting thing about Ken Brunsky is that if you do look at his work, he, he did a series of 10 compositions from one to X, once using Roman murals, um, numerals. Um, great series of work, but it all relates to music. And his work is based on sounds and sound movement. So when you look at a piece of Anne Kandinsky's work, you, if you look hard enough, you can see dance, music, notes, it's in there. But he believed that it was about sound frequency that, that inspired him to produce certain areas of his abstract. Um, and he said, why, well, you know, spend all this time recreating this image that's taking you forever and it's got to be good if you're painting horses if you're not comfortable or um, you're not painting something that's really figurative well break it down into colors but be clear about it simplify it so kandinsky at the moment alice thank you um, a lot of my work is based around Kandinsky as well, so I love abstract art. Um, I find it really, really um, enables me to be abstract and express myself. So for my expression, being abstract is a good way to get that message out there. Um, so words, going back to this, words. So by just creating a word, it might mean that you want to use performing art. So you know, think of words and perhaps words of gratitude. And I think what's important, if you produce something like, for example, it's, let's just say it's a, a mini Zentangle, well, perhaps write a little message of gratitude on the back, photograph it and send it to somebody. Or pop it in an envelope if you can get out, or even a postcard. So, your work is yours, and when you create a piece of art, and I know a lot of artists that they never leave their studio, and you know, and that applies. I work with organisations that actually provide the platform because artists want to get out there, but they can't. Um, they just cannot do it. Um, but a lot of artists actually choose to work behind closed doors and don't want to share their work. But if you're proud of what you've done, share it with somebody, photograph it, send it to them. Um, but use words, use that performing art to actually write something worth of gratitude on the back. And a little picture maybe of a flower, and, you know, and you know, there's nothing, you know, you may be able to draw a flower, you know, it's... And you may just want to send that to someone and say, thanks. And this is art, so every time you're doing something, for example, like this, is that moment of relaxation. Um, you can't go to the time for relaxation in art. The moment of being creative is the time that you release it, but you're doing it. And that's what's important. Experiment, discover, and have fun. Being creative, so, so important. And I, I hope that message is out there because um, I'm happy, I'm at the BCHO, so I'm happy to, to, to offer support where I can and when I can in terms of how you may want to progress with your art. Um, it is important that we've all got access to art. Um, so from drawing, from drawing and art really is, it's a way of accessing a sense of calm. So if you think about that, Whilst you're doing it, you're relaxing. You know, and I think you can really, really explore the in-between bits. But art to relaxation, you've got a whole world in, in between. Um, and that's experimenting, exploring, having fun, playing, you know, trying all these different forms of art. Mm. Stuart, is, is there somewhere that people can access some kind of activities maybe online if they want to do further art sessions? Yeah, I mean, obviously, unfortunately, under the circumstances at the moment, yes, we do offer these classes here at Ignite, but like a lot of places, they're not really accessible at this moment in time. Um, I'm actually in the process of, of, of preparing and producing some um, mini online blogs that might help. Um, that's ongoing. 
Um, but there are also an awful lot of tutorials out there. If you're actually getting onto YouTube or something, please, please just to put it in the search. If it's something specific that you want to put into your Google search, then just look for it and explore it. Um, a lot of galleries that I know now are going into the virtual world. So, you know, we can still enter galleries now, um, but just in a virtual capacity. Um, so there is a myriad of, of links out there and I couldn't begin to tell you more now, but I think if you're on YouTube or somewhere on Facebook or whatever, I think use that platform to explore and search. That's important. Um, accessible workshops like everything at the moment in a physical capacity are really not happening. So everything's now gone online. Um, I know Bournemouth Council offer um, a creative steps to well-being online tutorial which is run on a weekly basis. For that you would need to, I, I would, we can feed that information back after the session. Um, so by contacting the council, their arts and health management team, they will give you some links and ways to access art tutorials that are going on at the moment. And I know they are going on because I'm I have an involvement with some of them, so um, but they, they're growing. They really are growing in popularity. Um, so it is out there. A lot of it is online. So it's important that you kind of have a little search around that. Bournemouth Council, Arts Health, Mind. A lot of big charities and funded organisations. Um, outside In is another one. It's a platform for artists, um, up and coming, established but it relates to certain criteria. And I work with them quite closely. Um, and with me, it's about engaging mental health and how art is used to, um, to, to obviously improve, improve your health um, and help and aid towards the improvements. So creative ways of well-being. And can you tell us when your next art as relaxation session is? Absolutely. On Facebook Live. So, two weeks from now, so I've just got to get the date. No, so it's, it's two weeks from now. So, if we say two weeks from now, it's going to be another arts relaxation. Now, um, as far as I'm aware at the moment, it's going to be here. But if that changes, obviously, it probably hinges on the weather. But this is really related to us being indoors at the moment and I'd like to take this outside. Now even if we're here, I'm actually do that by exploring what's out there. Because it's so important that whatever we're doing at the moment, we may be confined to inside, but remember there's, a, there's such a creative world outside. So important to get your inspiration from that. Um, but I can show you there's so many different methods and techniques. And can we mention that we, we plan at Ignite to be running our workshops in the classroom from August, some point in August? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for reminding me, Mark. Because, um, yes, yes. So, so let's say, you know, sometime in August, let's, let's, let's probably not guarantee that at the beginning, let's say about the middle of August, possibly. But in August, we're hoping to be running the sessions here at the BCHA Ignite sessions again in which case i will be running the arts relaxation so bear that in mind um hopefully things are going to change in that in a more positive direction for us all at the moment and um, but at the moment i think see what you've got around you at home and utilize that to draw inspiration it might mean you're just looking out the window you don't want to have the luxury of a garden i don't so you've got to draw that inspiration if, you, if you're not going out see what's out there. It might only be in my case it's just a pigeon in a seed girl in a building but um, but it's, a, it's finding that inspiration within yourself and grabbing that moment for relaxation um, and, and just have fun doing it and you know I think I'm totally biased about doing art because it so covers so many areas you know mention art is think of this piece of art a painting you know it's about all sorts it's about just words just a little doodle, something simple. So that something simple, nice and little. Can we also just 
quickly say thank you to everybody for joining us today. Absolutely. And thank you for your interest. Thank you for your questions. Yeah, um, I, I, I've, had, I've had a lot of fun doing this. And so, you know, it's been great if you've joined me today. I've had fun doing this and, and I enjoy it. I love what I do. And I, I just want you to explore creativity and art. So thank you, everybody. And I really look forward to seeing you all again very soon. And just in closing, can we just quickly mention that next week's Facebook Live session will be at the same time, 10 o'clock next Thursday. Yep. And it will be Irwin running the Stress Less. So thinking about ways of dealing with stress. Yeah, absolutely. So, yep, here, 10 o'clock next Thursday, Irwin Stress Less. So I look forward to you all joining me, and I'm sure Owen will at this session next Thursday. It's live session. Um, yeah, it's been a great, it's been an experience for me today. Um, I just hope I've managed to convey uh, the message about how art uh, can lead to relaxation, and it's so important. Um, but also find something else new about yourself. Um, we are all creative. Enjoy. It. Thank you, Stuart. Bye.